Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Yoshi and today I'm going to show you the performance of my brand new MacBook Pro 14 inch M1 Pro chip. I bought the base model, this model's performance is so impressive. And what better way to showcase you the performance of this laptop than using Lightroom, the brand new version, the latest release, combined with Photoshop, combined with a few internet browsers open and while editing some of your photos that you sent but first of all I really want to thank all the people who send in a photo to my email address inframesunday at outlook.com Thank you so much for sending in a photo I really appreciate it that you trusted me to edit one of your photos So enough of talking let's jump straight into Lightroom and edit those photos <sighs> Now, first of all, I'm going to shortly explain to you guys how I usually work in Lightroom. I'm going to keep this short as I want to dedicate an entire video to my workflow in a later video. But basically, I always start by importing all photos I took that day. Import them in my master catalog. I will explain it in a later video why I only use a master catalog. And then I create a different collection which basically holds all photos I'm going to edit or all photos that belong to one certain project. So that's how I came up with the first selection. I received around six different photos and all of the, these six photos are sent in by four different people. So first of all, whenever I load up every photo in the Lightroom, I make a basic selection of my favorite photos and because some people did send in two photos I only picked my favorite ones and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now in Lightroom and I always use shift and then I use the number 5 so whenever you hit shift 5 you rate your photo with 5 stars and you instantly jump to the next photo and that way it's really easy to make a basic first selection in Lightroom and that's how I always for my first selection process in Lightroom. So load up every photo in Lightroom in your library or in your catalog, organize them using a separate collection and then start rating all photos and make a basic selection using the star system. And then whenever I made the first pass of my selection, I pick only the five star photos to edit. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Jump straight into the first photo. All right, the first photo I am going to edit is a photo taken by Frankers and I will post the link to his Instagram page right now on screen and I will post the link in the description as well so you can check out his amazing work. Be sure to check every single creator out because all of their photos are really great and they really deserve some recognition. First of all, whenever I start editing a photo, I check the composition and check whether the horizon is perfectly aligned in the photo. So those are really important things to do and never skip them and I always start with that so I never forget to do that and I always start editing on a photo with a straight horizon. And then think about the golden layer and you can clearly see I did play around with the framing and I made sure that the subject was standing basically in one of the vertical lines of the photo. It's not exactly the golden rule of thirds but I wanted to make it a 16 by 9 ratio so it looks a bit more cinematic because this shot is really it's perfect. And then basically next up is hitting that lens correction button and the camera profile correction button so Lightroom will automatically read the raw file that's only possible with raw files and pick the lens that was used to snap the photo and it will apply some basic lens corrections basically and whenever your lens creates some standard chromatic aberration for instance Lightroom will correct that automatically as well some basic vignetting and deforms the photo a little bit 
I always take off those boxes unless I really want to play around with the lens distortion, for instance, when using a photo of a GoPro. Okay, and then it's on to the basic editing. I always start with the white balance. I often pick one by myself. If you have a specific white subject in the photo, you can always use the color picker and pick the appropriate white tint in the photo and then Lightroom or Photoshop will adjust the light balance for you. And then it's all personal taste. To be honest, with this new MacBook, I didn't import my last presets I used for Instagram and I always start with a clean edit. In the future, I might create some more presets. But right now, to be honest, I only start with a few edits of a series. So whenever I went out for shooting a few photos, I know that the light conditions at that time of snapping the photos are similar. So whatever I do is I edit one or two different photos in the style I want, then I copy and paste over the different effects from one photo to each other. And that's the way I most of the time work within Lightroom. Anyway, so whatever I, what else that I did, so some basic um, corrections and you can clearly see that I play around with the shift key as well. So whenever you can see, for instance, whenever I edit the highlights or the shadows, the screen starts to turn black or white, showing the highlights um, or the overexposed areas or the most underexposed areas. And that way I always start correcting the white and blacks and the light and shadows in my photos and then it's all a personal taste I start playing around with the contrast with the texture and the clarity and things like that and most of the time you will see that I play around with my different adjustment sliders and I always over process a little bit and then I will turn back the slider a little bit and that's a perfect way to not over edit or over process your photos and then I wanted to crush the blacks, so I moved the dark point a bit up with the curves adjustment layer and I played with it around. Guys, just one piece of advice, always use the color curve because this is really important to make your photo stand out. You can tweak the colors so easily with it and it's something many people skip but it will help to make your photo stand out even more. So color adjustment using the color tint curve, then I use HLS sliders um, to light up several colors and to play around with several colors. And then lastly I used a few masks to basically correct for the slightly overexposed sky. And I didn't like this patch of cross which was lit here, it was a bit overexposed to me so I did use a brush to slightly underexpose this part as well and then it's a matter of personal taste I added a bit more dramatic colors to it a bit more blue to the shadows so it has this warm and teal orange look and that's my very first edit all right the next photo is a photo taken by NTX dot photography man I really love your work you're from Belgium I haven't met you yet but your photos, your street photography is really nice and I really, really loved that you send in a photo to me. And one of the first things that basically popped up with this long exposure photo was cyberpunk to me because yeah, I'm not used to edit street photography photos but this shot is really beautiful on its own and I wanted to do something different with it so I went for the colder magenta tones I crushed the blacks and I wanted to give it that cyberpunk vibe. So basically some neon vibes, neon signs and things like that. So that was what I did. I did play around with the lighting first to check how sharp this photo is because man, you can't even see noise in this photo, which is crazy. I, I don't know what camera you used. I, I might be able to, to look that up for a minute. It's the EOS 6. D. Yeah, okay, that, that's a Canon. Huh. Honestly, all photos in the series are taken with a Canon camera except for one which was taken with a mobile phone. Really nice. Huh? So, man, first of all, I, I, I just played around with the temperature and the color tints again. Um, 
then I crushed the black tones and then I wanted, wanted to add some uh, blue tints, some cyan tints to the black tones as well. And then you can clearly see that in the street, for, um, for instance, the light reflects on the street. I, I assume the street wasn't entirely dry, it did rain a bit or it was some condensation of water because it was night already. And I really wanted to accentuate those particles of the street. And yeah, I used a special brush for that. And I did paint the street entirely. And then I used the clarity filter and some more color grade. And then I noticed some artifacts. And I think that's due to the, the black tints and how I crushed the blacks in Lightroom itself. So I did remove those by using the retouch tool. So the next photo is a photo taken by photographs by Mario. Unfortunately this was a JPEG file so keep that in mind but man I really love your photos and your work is really great and you've been a long time follower so thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel for such a long time and for all the support you gave me during the past few years already. Uh, now, one thing I didn't like about this photo was that it was quite saturated regarding the colors. So I did do my best to accentuate the fall colors basically. But in the meantime, I wanted to desaturate them a little bit and play a bit around with the sky because the sky didn't contain too many details and was slightly overexposed. So I did play around with those things. And yeah, that's how I created some kind of moody edit, basically similar to my own personal style. But I really love the photo. So thank you so much for sending it in, Mario. And I can't wait to see what other photos you're going to come up with later in the future. So thank you so much for sending in one additional photo. And then this last one is from a long time subscriber to my YouTube channel as well. And her name on YouTube and Instagram is Apple Moose, but her real name is Anna. And thank you so much, Anna, for sending in one of your diorama photos. I really love your miniature worlds you create. And as you're also a really nice artist regarding drawing and painting, I wanted to do something special with this photo. So this edit is specially for you. So first of all, I did start playing around with the composition. But then there were some deer in the background that were not entirely visible and yeah, I didn't want to destroy the photo's composition too much because it was already quite great. Now, the photo was a little bit underexposed so I started playing around with the lights, shadows and things like that. So all basic stuff, I didn't do too excessive editing in this photo. And then I thought maybe I should go way more creative and jump straight into Photoshop. So with that in mind, I started editing the sky, so the blue tones a little bit harder, so it was easier to isolate the sky later in the edit. And that's exactly what I did right now. And then I went to Photoshop and I added some sky with the sky replacement tool. Now with this new MacBook Pro, this is a feature that I never was able to use on my Windows computer because I was still working with an older version of Photoshop. And to be honest, my computer would basically explode with uh, all these heavy functions. And considering, I mean, you see it right now on screen, how fast Photoshop opens up, even though I'm listening to music in 4K on YouTube and Google Chrome while I'm still working in Lightroom as well. So this is just crazy. It's mind blowing how fast this base model for Apple is. And so that's what I did. I did add a few clouds in the sky. I wanted to add something in the sky because now it was just a solid blue color and I wanted to play around with a bit more details. So that's exactly what I did. And then I wanted to give it that paint-esque look. So I tried play around with the neural filters which is a new feature introduced last year apparently by Adobe but right now uh, last update in October really added a lot of functionality to the neural filters and I want to play around with it so I'm not going to showcase you all of the things I tried and jump straight into the edit so I wanted to give it some 
paint as Kluk and <clears throat> yeah, a, a water painting or things like that. And then I just brought back some details in the sky and I did some basic retouching as well. So I didn't like, for instance, this uh, part of the pumpkin. I didn't like that too much. So I did use the clone stamp tool and removed that part as well. And then I did some final tweaking in Lightroom as well. I did reduce the saturation a little bit because I didn't like it and I added a light source as well. And this light source really adds a lot to the painting in my opinion. And adds some more depth in the photo. And I think the final result is quite nice. And with this last edit guys, I really wanted to show something more about the functionality of both Lightroom and Photoshop and the speed of editing in Photoshop. Now you've seen me edit all four photos, I think it's time to export everything in Lightroom right now. And just keep in mind guys, don't blink with your eyes because before you know, every single photo of these is exported in just a fraction of a second. Okay, and that's basically it for this first episode of Edit Your Photo. Thank you so much once more for sending in your photos and I really appreciate it. Now, if you didn't already, please hit the like button if you liked this video. Leave a comment down below uh, and let me know what photo you liked the most and what edit you liked the most. Did you like my edits? or not? Are you a fan of neural filters and artificial intelligence used for editing photos or are you someone who don't, doesn't like this type of editing? Just let me know in the comments down below and we might have a discussion about it or talk about it. If you have any further questions regarding the performance of the Apple, let me know as well. And then the only thing that rests me to say is if you don't uh, the only thing that rests me to say is that you don't need to be great to start, but start to become great. See you in the next video. Bye!